Alright, welcome back everyone to more Elder Scrolls Online. <clears throat> we are in Rothgar, the homeland of the Yorks. Alright, um... So, we're gonna do Rothgar and, uh... We still have a few small and left unfinished items in Vardenfell. Maybe two or three, plus a few world bosses, but uh, let's explore... Rothgar and uh, see what's going on here. What are you doing? We can't let Chief Basrog deal with the Winterborn by himself. I didn't come all this way to die, Elf. That isn't what I signed up for. Damn it! Where are all these Winterborn marauders coming from? Anyone see where the chief and his warriors went? Anyone? All I see is death and Iceheart's damn Winterborn. A whole lot of Winterborn. Did Orsinium send you? Are you part of the reinforcements? The Winterborn came out of nowhere. It happened so fast. They took our cargo into the hills and the orc peasants chased them. That's when Chief Basrog and his warriors arrived. Uh, slow down and tell me what happened. Our caravan was heading for Orsinium, the new Orc City, when the Winterborn landed on the wagons like flesh flies on Skiba Pie. The Orc peasants refused to let their supplies be taken, so they chased the marauders into the hills. Uh, you let defenseless peasants go after the marauders? In case you haven't noticed, these cracked acorns aren't worth their weight in bloodberry pudding. Besides, before we could rally our forces, Chief Basrog and his orc warriors arrived. He told us to wait here and then went after the marauders. All right, I'll go help the chief. I knew I liked you the moment I saw you. Chief Basrog is big and mean and looks like he can fight. But there are an awful lot of marauders. Iceheart's Winterborn won't stop until Basrog and all the orc peasants are dead. You better hurry. Yeah, let's not ask too many questions. Let's take a look here at our audio. I want to make sure we're not... Uh... Yep, everything is turned up. Good. Okay, let's go in. I don't think we've gotten the we've discovered the way shrine, so let's let's take care of that first and get it out of the way. What it's all the way down there. I guess, uh, I guess we'll get to that when we get to it. Let's just go try to rescue the orc peasants. going on here.
There's more of them. Watch out. Where are they? Is it just me, or do these enemies just seem a lot weaker than the kind we were facing in Vaudenfell? There are still some of us hiding in the cave near the waterfall. You have to help them too. I saw what you did out there. Thanks for helping the clan orcs. The ones in here? I think it's too late to help them. Iceheart. He froze them solid. The bastards got magic, the likes of which I've never seen. Uh, you're one of Chief Barzrug's soldiers? Yes. I'm with Barzrug. We were out on patrol when we saw the Winterborn attack the caravan. By the time we reached the wagons, the marauders had already stolen the supplies, and a group of orc peasants were trying to chase them down. Stupid Who's Iceheart? Your fawn Iceheart. He's the most powerful of the Winterborn warlords that have been raiding Rothgar the past few years. Since he arrived from the Reach, the attacks have gotten worse. Iceheart is strong, ambitious, and extremely dangerous. Yeah, we can deal with Iceheart. I like your courage, but I don't think you'll get to test it today. If Iceheart was still around, we'd be frozen solid by now. My guess? He got what he wanted and hightailed it out of here. <laughs> A shame, really. The outlying clans need those supplies. Uh, the supplies from the caravan? Enough food and supplies to get the outlying clans through the winter. Without those supplies, the clans are going to starve. Chief Bosrog went to track down the marauders and find the supplies. If he fails, I don't know what you're going to do. Uh, so how can I help? Search the area and see if you can find anything that even hints as to where the Marauders disappeared to. If you happen to pick up their trail, find Chief Basra. He'll know what to do. Leave no stone out. Anything you uncover, will be useful. Where did you take our supplies? Every second until you tell me what I want to know. Quite a number of harpies here. Quite a lot of harpies. The supplies have already been removed from this container. Ah, they respond. Our destruction staff to forty six. Don't even sleep it. He supplies below the winter for now. Yeah. 
Let's see, to Warlord Iceheart, I risk everything by betraying my people for this promised gold and the right to sell exclusively to your clans. There can't be any delay or mistakes. I've already given a portion of the gold to a group of Khajiiti traders in order to solidify my other endeavors in Orsinium. The supply caravans will arrive soon through the Merchant's Gate, with food enough to support the outlying clans through the upcoming winter. The caravan also carries furs, medicines, medicines and other supplies. They should serve your clans very well. Just refer to the schedule I provided and you should be able to catch each one unawares. Strike quickly and use your harpies to fly the supplies to your camp. Just be warned, Chief Barzarg and his soldiers have been patrolling the trade roads. That orc is a ruthless bastard. I suggest you tell your warriors to do their best to avoid him. Vulture. Who is Vulture? Who the hell is Vulture? Right, says I uh, show the note to Chief Barzrak. Well, before we talk to him, I think uh, let's first go and uh, let's go and. Uh, Check out this uh, this way shrine. Let's just put it on the map. Safe enough isn't good enough. Go after them. I'll continue to look for the Winterborn and the missing supplies. Are they on their way to Orsinium? The soldiers escorted them and the wounded outsiders. They should be safe enough. Safe enough isn't good enough. Go after them. I'll continue to look for the Winterborn and the missing supplies. You're the outsider who leaped into the bear's den to fight the Winterborn? Oh, Shan, the wood elf mentioned you. Surprised you didn't end up all bruised and bloody like the rest of these fools. This is our home, not an amusement for your pleasure. I saved your people. And I appreciate that. Doesn't change the fact that I despise that you're here, though, sticking your nose in our business. I was invited. Ah, uh, yes. The King's invitation. And what a royal bag of snakes that is. Look, you have my thanks for saving those people. As much as I hate it, I owe you a favor. But right now, I need to determine where they took the stolen supplies. Uh, maybe this note will help you find the supplies? Let me see that. We've been betrayed, and for gold, no less. By Malakath, I'll make sure someone pays for this. Look, I need to protect the next caravan to come through the Merchant's Gate. If you truly want to help Rothgar, then you will help me. What do you want me to do? This note indicates that the traitor has interests in the city. I want you to track down this traitor and find our stolen shipments. The fastest way to get on my good side, and on Kurogs, is to expose the traitor and recover our supplies. All right, I'll go to Orsenium and see what I can learn. I suggest you start your search in the inn. Gold and dark dealings often go hand in hand with drinking and celebrating. Don't disappoint me. I hate putting my trust in outsiders. Do everyone a favor and prove me wrong. Uh, what should I look for in the city? Look for anything that would link this traitor to the note you found. Someone with a lot of gold to spend would be a good start. Then there are the Khajiiti traders that were mentioned. How many of the cat people could there be in Orsinium? Uh, what are you chief of? I'm the chief of the Foreign Clan. One of the oldest and strongest clans in all of Rothgar. Kurog makes it sound like tradition is a bad thing. 
But by Malakath's broken tooth, tradition is the lifeblood of our culture. It's who we are. That's why you're giving me so much grief. You're a long way from home, and sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. That's a good way to get it cut off, at least in my stronghold. Still, Malakath would call me a fool if I turned down help when it was freely offered. Another guy with a bad attitude. Okay, let's just uh, move on. Why does the land spin so fast? This land. It promised hope and opportunity, but it hides a basket full of biting snakes. Do not mind me. I must have hit my head. Now I need to find my partners. If only the land would remain beneath my feet and the sky stay above my head. Uh, what happened to you? It was a nightmare. We were on our way to Arsinium, ready to start a new business, when we were set upon by Winterborn from the Reach. I whipped our beasts for all they were worth, but in their fear, they ran off the road and our cart overturned. Uh, where are your companions? It is a mystery and a mystery. My partners, my friends, they are gone. I fear they went over the cliff, along with most of the books we brought from Daggerfall. Please find them. I would aid you, but my head spins like a broken top. Yeah, we'll find your partners. Please hurry and find my friends. I fear that none of us will survive long on our own in this forsaken wilderness. All right, tell me more about your business in Rothgar. Our partnership formed back in Daggerfall, where Jalore, Travofia, and I established a successful book-selling business. When the opportunity presented itself, we decided to make the move to Arsinium. If only I knew what awaited us here. So you and your partner sell books? Oh yes, rare books, popular books. Even a few ancient scrolls when we have them. And with connections throughout the Daggerfall Covenant, special orders pose no problem. With our Orsinium Merchant's Permit, we plan to open a shop in the city. Orsinium Merchant's Permit? Who knew orcs could be so bureaucratic? Nothing happens in the new city without the proper forms and licenses. After months of negotiation, we finally received the permit that allows us to open our shop in Orsinium. It's Jalloray's dream come true. Yeah, let's not waste time talking about those two guys. We'll find them. Let's see, has it been, uh... Out. Do we have, uh... Yeah, we can actually... So do we do carry capacity or stamina? Looks like a place that would actually belong in East March. Looks like a city of the Nords. Complaining and I it's a good day, friend. I've got gold in my pocket and a full mug in my hand. So what can I do for you? I couldn't help but over here. What was that about a large amount of gold? 
I don't see how that's any of your business. And if you're thinking of trying to rob me, well, think again. I need this gold for my daughter. Now leave me be, or I'll, I'll hit you with my mug. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to find somebody who came across a large amount of gold recently. Oh, why didn't you just say so? Being all mysterious and scaring a person half to death. So why are you looking for Gulag? I just need to find out how he got the gold. My Trinimax deformed toe. If this gold is illegal, my Shilha needs her potions. All right, let's try this. If you forget all about what we were discussing, then I might have information that will help you. Do you agree? Uh, what discussion? I didn't hear a thing. Right, right. You never heard this from me, but Gulag left here a little while ago to talk to those Khajiit traders. You know, the ones who showed up recently? And if nothing else, you should be able to smell them. Smell them? He wears some kind of fancy fragrance, says it keeps the spirits docile. The Khajiit sold it to him. You ask me, it smells like a dead horker left out too long in the sun. Follow that scent and it'll lead you right to him. Well, since we're in Orsinium, let's take a look upstairs. See if we can find some lore books and start learning about the Orcs. Or the ways of the Orcs. The Chronicles of King Kurok, Book 1. By Zephyrin Frey, Chronicler of Wayrest. I first met Kurag Grobakrog in the wilds of Illswere. I was there pretending to be a scholar from Wayrest, but my true purpose was to watch, listen, and report back to King Emric of Wayrest about events in the Khajiiti homeland. It was in this capacity as a spy that I originally encountered the boisterous and charismatic orc warrior. He was newly arrived from Rothgar, busy establishing himself in the mercenary group known as the Gaspard Stalkers. From all reports, he was brave, competent, and of unmatched physical prowess. He certainly looked the part to me. The Breton mercenary leader, Gaspard Esmeri, opened his ranks to any and all races, as long as you were willing to follow orders and fight with all your strength. Gaspard had a place for you in his unit. Kurak brought along a handful of powerful orcs who also happened to be extremely loyal to the young warrior. Soon, they were the most prominent members of the stalkers, getting the most dangerous missions and the orgers' share of the loot. I was able to get close to Kurag on a number of occasions. He enjoyed being flirted with, especially by an attentive Breton woman, who enjoyed sampling Khajiiti delicacies as, mu as much as he did. During these moments, when we met for food and drink, he let down his guard and told me things I'm sure he wouldn't have revealed to any of his male acquaintances. It was during one such rendezvous in a dark and seedy turban in the city of Orcrest that I learned about the Orc Warrior's past and his dreams for the future. We have all heard the horrible stories of life in the Orc strongholds. Kurok told me of his younger days as part of a clan in distant Rothgar. He was the best and the brightest of a new crop of younglings, stronger, faster, and in many ways more brilliant than either his contemporaries or most of his elders. But he was unsatisfied with life in the clan. He wanted to prove himself in battle. He wanted to see the world. And both he and his clan chief knew that if he remained in the stronghold much longer, one of them was going to die. That was the way of life for the Orcs. Instead of pushing the issue and challenging the chief, Kurag rallied his bosom companions and signed on with a recruiter for Gaspard Stockard's mercenary company. After lending his talents to help win skirmishes across Hammerfell and Cyrodiil, the company had made its way to elsewhere. Kurag seemed to be having a grand old time seeing the sights, eating the food, betting the wenches, his words not mine, and winning battle after battle. I offered Kurag a spoonful of honey pudding, my other hand resting on his powerful arm, and asked in all innocence, but what about the future, my powerful friend? The future? Kurag laughed. I'm going to go home, kill the old chief, and take command of my clan. Kurag said all his matter of all this matter of factly. He wasn't boasting. He wasn't trying to impress me. He was simply telling me what he believed. And you know what? I believed it too. This was definitely an orc that King Emmerich was going to want to keep an eye on. Mark my words. There is an even higher level in this place. Let's see, orcs and their tusks, an informal study by Form Seleth. What is the fascination the typical orc has with his or her own tusks? I swear, if they aren't constantly polishing or sharpening the darn things, they're studying them in whatever reflective surface is at hand, or looking longingly at the tusks of their neighbors. And when they're not doing these things, they're talking about their tusks like they were royal heirlooms or ancient relics that were almost magical in nature, 
Let me tell you, it's enough to drive this dark elf a bit mad. While I suppose it would be rude to just come right out and ask a Nork about his obsession with all things Tusk related, I decided that making a study of how the word and concept of the Tusk was used in everyday Orc speech could help me reach some level of understanding. The first Orc I approached about the subject, a young female who I'll call Orcar, made an angry face at least, I think it was angry. I find it difficult to tell the difference when it comes to the countenance of the average Orc, and told me in an angry voice to tusk off. What an odd expression, I thought. Tusk off. Simple, declarative. It means almost nothing, but, it, but as it emerged from Orca's mouth, I knew exactly what she wanted me to do. I departed quickly, making my apologies in great haste, even as she was reaching for the axe hanging at her side. <laughs> this got me to thinking about other Orcish expressions that contain the ubiquitous word. For example, by Malakat's tusk. This seems to be an all-purpose exclam exclamation that substitutes the proper noun with any of a multitude of famous or infamous orcs. I've heard orcs swear by the tusks of Malakath, Trinimac, Kurog, Basrog, Forge Mother Algar, Uthra the Flatulent, and even Hearth Mothers and ancient ancestors that no one but the orc making the excl exclamation even remembers. And for variety, the Forsworn tusks might be chipped, cracked, broken, missing, pierced, or any of a myriad of shades and colors. Another expression I hear over and over in the Orsinium Taverns, better than, better than a kick in the tusks, seems to imply that one unpleasant experience is somewhat less agreeable than another un unpleasant experience. When one orc says to another, I hear you fell into a pond full of leeches, a companion exclaims, yeah, but it was better than a kick in the tusks. I can only conclude that no matter how horrible an ordeal an orc suffers, there could always be something worse. I suppose that an orc's tusks are extremely sensitive and a kick must instill in them unbearable pain. Or it's just something to say and you can't really infer anything deeper from the conversation. Orcs can be so confusing. But this is just the tip of the tusk as it were. Spend a few hours in an orc tavern and you'll hear all kinds of expressions involving tusks. Tusk you. Who gives a tusk? You tusking idiot. <laughs> what the tusk? Stop tusking around. Tusk me. And perhaps my favorite. Go tusk yourself. <laughs> Which at first glance seems to be an impossible request, but I've seen what an orc tusk can do to flesh and blood. An orc must really dislike the person he or she offers this fierce suggestion to. I decided to make one more attempt to get an orc to discuss the topic of tusks with me. This time I chose a striking young female who was seated by herself in a dark corner, making her way to the bottom of a bottle of Orsinium Pink Zinfandel. I asked if she'd be willing to talk about the many uses for the word tusk in the orcish vocabulary. Tusk no, she told me no in certain terms. Nevertheless, I pressed the issue. Are you tusking kidding me? She asked. When I assured her I wasn't tusking kidding her, she balled up her fist and knocked me on my ar arse. Tusk, I exclaimed, and I finally understood the true meaning of the word. <laughs> That's just silly. Let's see, Investigator Veil, The Curse of Mandrake Manor. Okay, this is going to be the last uh, lore book that we read, and uh, then we'll take a break. Investigator Veil, vale, The Curse of the Mandrake Manor. You have no ghost, my dearest friend. The culprit is, in fact, Paulin the blacksmith. Investigator Veil's vale words echoed off the walls as the crowd gathered in the library around Lady Mandrake. Investigator Veil's vale words echoed off the walls as the crowd gathered in the library around Lady Mandrake gasped. Heads turned in all directions, seeking the accused in the back of the room. The blacksmith stood nervously. A look of utter guilt spread across his face, even as he shook his head from side to side. What are you talking about? There was no way a mere mortal could have caused all this trouble, he said, defensively. How could I sneak into a locked room and murder the butler? How could I hide the body when I was in my forge the entire time? You have no evidence, wench. The room fell silent as all eyes once again turned to investigate a veil. The insult didn't seem to faze her in the least. Her eyes sparkled in the flickering candlelight as she drew back her shoulders and tilted up her chin slightly so that her raven hair fell across her back. The fingers of her right hand curled into a tight fist, seemed to clutch something. She made a deliberate show of rotating her fist and letting her fingers fall open to reveal a shiny bronze key in the shape of a skull. Oh, you have once again underestimated me, dear Paulin, Vale said. The evidence is clear as the nose on your face. You were the only one who had access to this skeleton key the one lost by the Lord of Mandrake Manor. Paulwyn's eyes widened. He stumbled over his words before collecting himself. Then he said, You, you don't know that was mine. How did you even get it? I, wait, you used me. Vale's head rolled back as a joyous laugh erupted from her long, elegant throat. Oh, you silly little man. 
Of course I used you, those drinks we shared last night. I added a tincture to, to yours that allowed me to search your rooms after you fell into a deep sleep. It was then a simple matter of, for me to see exactly what was out of place. Vale, now moving about the room and playing to her audience, continued. Scratches on the floor by the bookshelf clearly revealed evidence of a hidden door. Gloves, casually tossed in a corner, stained with blood. Boots caked with grass from the forest where the bodies were found. And this key, sitting on your nightstand for anyone to see. What does any of that prove except that you drugged me, Polren cried. It proves everything, Vale said happily. Instead of a ghost, we have a disgruntled blacksmith who wandered the tunnels beneath the manor. Tunnels that could only be accessed with this key. What started as a scheme to frighten and blackmail the Lord, shame on you for that, eventually led to murder. No, Paulwyn screamed. I won't be cheated out of what's mine. Not again. He drew a dagger from his belt and rushed toward Vale. She stepped to the side at the last possible moment, sending Paulwyn off balance and headlong into the wall. He fell, his own dagger protruding from his chest. Murder never pays, Vale said. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a bottle of aqua vitae waiting for me. And another mystery. There's always another mystery. All right, an interesting one. All right, uh, we're going to take a break here. We'll be right back with more Elder Scrolls Online. 